thank you very much, Jill, for making the time to meet today and do a recording. You've been the person behind the camera in nearly all of the recordings. And um, I think it's important for you, and a little bit of later today we'll, we'll record me, for us to give a sense um, to the people who are doing um, our courses of who we are. Um, they can have a look at our profile and they can see the way we present ourselves, but it does give them a bit more insights into, into who we are as people and why we're doing what we're doing. I do totally agree. It just feels like weird being in front of the camera now. <laughs> sure, sure. And it's very awkward. I definitely feel a lot more confident behind that camera. <laughs> and no doubt there might be some giggling or strange silences. <laughs> but it's part of the process, right? Absolutely. So thank you. You're welcome. Um, the first question that I wanted to ask is, um, what was it that drew you to technology? Well, I've been working on staff development as well. It combines my role of technology and thinking creatively and planning and organizing. I could probably stay this way back to when I was a kid and got my first computer. And with it came an encyclopedia, multimedia, and that's what I want to do. I want to create that. Wow. So, from there, I know other people just can't kind of fall into this role, they've been doing other things, but right from the outset, I wanted to create e-learning. So I was lucky enough when I've done my degree that I got placement here and I got to work in the University of Ulster and they were just starting their campus one. So I've been doing it for a long time now. <laughs> but that's really how I fell into my first computer. Right. Just seeing that technology in action and having an encyclopedia and multimedia and being able to interact with it. Well, then just going to the bookshop and picking up that book, so it was so nice. Because I've always loved technology and arts and things like that, so that's how I fell into it. And so today's learning landscape definitely is multi-dimensional, and it's blended classroom and online and mobile learning, so it's nice being able to put it all together and being at the forefront and working with people. And then in each project, you learn something new as well, so it's constantly evolving and. Nothing stays the same, so it's it's really nice. Yeah, really challenging space. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Um, why do you think that um, learning technologies are important for higher education now? Because now students so getting more and more technology. People are engaging with technology more. They're coming into university and expecting it. Although at the same time. They're, because they're using it on social medias and their social life, they're maybe not necessarily using it for work based. So there's an opportunity and staff, a way of getting staff to actually develop it and making students aware that using work based for different and having those different personalities. Like you look at my nephews and nieces and I, and they're picking up their iPads and they're talking away to them and they're doing stuff with them. And I'm thinking, never had that opportunity when I was young and you're looking at their parents well they don't even know what their kids are doing on that mm. <laughs> but yeah three-year-old niece can't read but she can talk to Google <laughs> wow, yeah. Yeah. so it's looking at all those things so they're expecting technology so it's definitely finding ways of putting it into learning to make it more engaging as well yeah both are more engaging yeah, and then more motivating it's yeah have it access to more learning materials and those like, different learning styles even though you don't really use accessibility as well. And accessibility was a huge thing with new laws and whatever coming in to make sure that all learning is accessible. I guess the, the difference with <clears throat> your nieces and nephews engagement and your engagement was that in a sense you were engaging with something that was quite fixed. Yeah. While talking to Google there's a possibility that Google's recording and developing a profile around yeah. those children, which is sort of like a... And it was kind of scary at the same time, what data they collect on you and how is that going to affect their lives in the future and go, I'm so glad that Facebook wasn't around when I was younger and all those photos being taken, then maybe they're just going to be completely used to being in the public eye, whereas now I'm going, looking at this camera and thinking, what am I doing here? <laughs> 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 but it's, it's definitely the way the world's going forward and forward and forward, so we need, need to be in higher education. Yeah. yeah. There is a definite need that we need to be looking at technologies in education yeah. to keep moving forward. And then what do you think are some of the, the areas that continue to perplex you or interest you 
in terms of learning technologies? Oh, interests me because it's so varied and there's so many different people. And working within the school, you're chatting to so many different people, and their main interest is something else. So you're getting to put technology into that. So you're learning something about their subject area as well. So it's quite interesting that road that mm. I'm picking up new techniques, new skills, and things and just by talking to people. Yeah, um, and interacting. And, and interacting rather than just sitting in this office and going, does anybody want to talk to me? <laughs> but it's nice being having that ability to, I'm actually learning new things all the time. And it doesn't have, it doesn't have to just be technology that I'm learning, although how to use technology in different roads, because one way is not going to fit up everyone. So that one piece of technology can be used to have a dozen different ways. And it's nice to be able to share all that as well and see mm -hmm. what other people are doing. Mm -hmm. I mean, one thing that strikes me is the, is the openness that you have, which, I, which I'm wondering if maybe it's, a, it's, it's wrong to generalize in many ways, but it's almost a uh, disposition of, of many people that deal with and, with and who support e-learning technologies, is a sense of an openness to change, to learning all the time. Yeah, you definitely need that. Because it is always changing, you need to have a, a not averse to change, and change is good. Within reason. <laughs> Sometimes changing for the sake of changing. Why bother? <laughs> you need to have a look at your reasons and see if you can improve things and have your aims and your goals and see what the learners actually need from it. Mm -hmm. Don't just incorporate technology to say, but you need to think about what the learners are actually going to get out of it. Yeah. The the educational the, benefits. The educational sense. benefits. The learner is the heart of what you're doing in the first place. You have to consider them. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, in the interest of sort of this sort of spirit of openness and connections, um, is there is there any particular area or interest where if somebody's listening now um, that uh, could maybe we could create a connection? anybody who's actually really interested in technology and e-learning and staff development and getting digital skills and accessibility into courses and making sure that they suit everyone. <laughs> suit everyone. <laughs> There's always going to be parts that some learners are going to enjoy more and whatever. But yeah. yeah. Well, thank you so much. Thank Hopefully you. this will be the first of many interactions that we have and um, record so that we ourselves can get used to it particularly since we're asking um, participants of our courses to do that. But thank you so much for your time.